It's amazing how helpful visitor centers are. You should really go. Or you could just go on your phone. Starry eyes and cellophane, she takes her walk, she makes her plan. Oh, don't mind the bears right over there. We just happen to be in the Kenai Peninsula. The truck bears down the avenue, there's broken glass, a missing pew at church. Maybe I guess I get some vice grips. Well, I think we could go to a welding shop. Maybe time's too strong. Are we falling? Are we falling? Even. They're flying even with us, so we so can't wait. You can get to see underneath their wing and everything. It's amazing. Ooh, did I get it tight? Drop the tip down. Drop the tip down now. Give it a pull. Should I fly a passenger with you? What? We're driving from Anchorage to the Kenai. We're actually going to. Beluga Lookout RV Park. Well done, Mr. Leach. And a couple updates. First of all, we pulled over on the side of the road because we saw this glacier river, these beautiful mountains. It's because it's just that beautiful. It is. We pulled we have over. To stop. We got the drone out and we got beautiful drone footage. And you know what that means? We get good drone footage, it's time for a fuel update. Yes. So I got the Google Sheet open. We're gonna run through some numbers. Quick update. The road from Anchorage to Kenai? Yes wonderful stellar oh the actual road yeah. is amazing but the view is even better the best we've seen so far today is july 10th and we have done 13 phillips since we left arizona mm -hmm. we have driven 4842 miles our average miles per gallon is 9.89 our average price per gallon is four dollars and 32 cents that's taking into average the canadian leaders and us dollars that all averaged out our total gallons used thus far 486 gallons and our total cost is 1796 dollars Woo! the gopro just died <laughs> how dare you picking up on the iphone now i didn't want to mention this right away but i feel like now you've been traveling with us for so long in alaska i feel like i should bring it up We've been tracking everywhere we've stayed every night mm -hmm. and the cost of the RV park. But you should know that you could boondock. A lot. Almost the whole way here mm -hmm. and almost everywhere along the way. Yes. Almost. Yeah. We, we're a little partial to the RV park, but we do not have to be. No. It's just easy. And we've even tracked, get this, wait, hold on, just wait for it. Okay, that's enough. How many days it rains in the same thing. I put, if it rains, I put rainy days. Because it's raining so much, I thought it'd be interesting to know how many rainy days and how many non-rainy days. Although our locations are changing, so it doesn't, you know. Still, how many days has rained on us in Alaska? Yes, but if we stayed in one location, it'd be a little bit more relevant. I doubt it. We break a title to ask the question why. We live and then we die, I think I'm fine. I'll write you from the other side. You like what I've done with the awning? Well, I'm sorry, do you like what I've done to the awning? So last night we came in here because these sights are so tight, I ended up having to get the truck really close and the awning was out. I didn't even realize it was raining last night. And I asked Caleb from inside, I said, hey, would you put up the, uh, would you mind putting in the awning? He says, yeah, and he's putting it in and then I hear this noise and like, didn't sound right. So that's jacked up pretty good. I've got some monkey wrenches, some vice grips that I can bend it and tweak it a little bit. Here, let me put it all the way in. Okay, that's all the way in. So we might have to just like tape it down. The good news is, is it's just an arm. Yeah, this is a part that can be replaced. Yeah. And it's just attached by rivets there and a rivet here. So it's not my ski jacket. <laughs> I remember saying in Texas, like, because I was wearing this very same jacket. Yeah. When, when are we going to see the sun? We haven't accomplished that yet, so just know that that's on my radar. <laughs> Expect some seasons, some upcoming seasons in yeah. the, uh, to, to be warm. So we're down here in the Kenai 
we're in the Kenai Peninsula, but specifically we're in the town of Kenai. And this is, uh, what time is it? Try to guess is nine. We're playing what time is it? What time do you think it is? What time do you think it is? Well, I think it's like nine. You're right. Oh, really? Yeah, it's cool. 9.07. So at nine o'clock and the Look tide this, is down. The this is the there. board tide. The volcano's in the sun. The volcano's in the sun. Let's go turn around. Look at the volcano. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, there's yeah. the volcano. And all the dip net fishermen are over there and around the corner. Our RV park is directly above them and it looks down. And yesterday, Trish and I were out here recording the dip net fishermen and we did a little fish sitting and an Alaskan was very grateful and he gave us a 10 pound salmon. Howdy. How are you? Good. So you see which way the water, the net is aimed. Like the one which way the water is going? Yeah. So that's the way you want the net to, uh, to go. So you're going to go like this. Yeah. And the fish are going this way. So sure. Going, they're trying to go up the river, but it's high tide. So let's see how long it takes to catch one. Okay. Can you keep it on the fish? Make sure that, can you keep it on it? Oh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. Oh, yes, I will. This uh, gentleman here is kind of sharing with me some information about how to dip net. And he said, will you keep an eye on that fish? And I said, uh, oh yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. Trish will keep an eye on it. <laughs> and then I looked over and I'm like, oh, I see who I'm supposed to watch out for. Woo, that's a big one. Oh. What? Heavy? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it took us what, five minutes for one? About five minutes, you're right. The dip netting is something just for the residents. Just to be a spectator is pretty fun. Yeah. It's, it's pretty a pretty cool. rich environment for the eyes. Oh, he's got one, he's got one. Oh. This kind gentleman offered us a salmon for all of the fish sitting that we're doing here. Now, now keep in mind, if you turn your back, there'll be 50 seagulls right here looking at you. Yeah. They know, they turn your back, they come here. So we're doing, this is an important job, Trish, and I'm willing to accept fish. We are fish not sitting. taking his fish. Just pouring olive oil on it, and then I'm gonna do salt and pepper, and that's it. That is it, a high temperature. That's all I'm gonna do. I know there's people out there that are thinking, that's all you're gonna do, olive oil, salt, and pepper. So, and I'm guessing you just don't overcook it. It's really, we we had dinner with a chef once, mm -hmm. okay? Remember Michael? Oh, um, Eddie Matney? Eddie Matney. Yeah. It's Eddie, we had- Michael, Eddie Matney. Eddie, yeah. sorry, <laughs> sorry. Remember he served us- Steak tartare. A little tomato, a little mint. Right. What is it exactly? It's a raw tenderloin. It's raw tenderloin. Okay, but I don't know. You never touch your chef's bath <laughs> when he's giving it to you because you're going to ruin it. Okay, I won't ruin so just, it. Just, just go ahead and just, I'm telling you, love, you'll love this. Don't touch. You'll love this. A whole thing, whole thing. You tell me it's not like awesome. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? It's amazing. That's raw. Raw meat, you know. It's amazing. Yeah. What is the key to your salmon? Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't overcook it. Okay. Now, I wish I had a, a real oven. Well, I've had salmon in the brig before. It's fine. If you have a real oven, I'd broil it, make it a little crispy on top, turn it down, finish cooking it just a little bit, and then do it over. And then do it over. It should still be a little squishy. 
Okay. Okay. Speaking of salmon. Yes. Tomorrow morning, we're getting on a plane with Talon Air. We're flying somewhere, I don't know where, and there are going to be grizzly bears there, and there's going to be salmon. Caleb's gonna have, a, Caleb's gonna be fishing. And I'm getting my wish. I really wanna see a bear fish. Bon appetit. There you have it. Easy. It is delicious. Mm, my bread. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Mark and Caleb. Hi, hey, Mark. Hey, hi. Morgan. Yeah, good to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's no, about a six hour trip total. Okay, cool. Never ever would I have expected this. Amazing, there's a sow in her cub. She's almost as big, the cub is almost mm -hmm. as big as the mom. And so the cub is coming over and kind of being playful and the mom is like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels like me sometimes in the morning, like ah! <laughs> but they're hunting around, they have their head under, and all these fishermen are lined up and they've had great success this morning. The bear Capturing was us. right off the bow of the boat. I mean, Caleb was like this close. The other thing that's really surprising is I cannot believe the salmon swim up that stream. One fish goes, another fish goes, wow. like instinct and follow the leader. I don't okay. know, whatever one of them decides, hey, it's time to go, and they just kind of start going. Not all of them go, but you'll get a number of them that definitely will take off and head up the head up the creek. All right, let me explain what's going on here. So this is Wolverine Creek, and the best fishing spot is up front right here, and they're all catching sockeye. And there's a line that comes in here, and there's about a half hour rotation on the front. So you get in your line, and you can fish, of course, but you continue to just work your way up to the front through a rotation. And these guys come off here, they're done fishing, and they're just kind of hanging out, watching the bears now. So 
you know, the, there's a seven o'clock flight, so you can get out here a little bit earlier and get in line earlier. But uh, Morgan says that the line goes pretty quick and everyone gets a spot in the front. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna reel it tight. I'm gonna give it a, a pull. If I don't feel yeah. it, I'm gonna reel it tight. I like fly fishing with a rod, with a spinning rod. Exactly, just working it back. Okay, so like. Yep, just like that. I'll do it at the, the same slat. pace as you. Yep. It's perfect. And then you'll just get it memorized and you just repeat. How do you know when it's like super close? So I should stop so one, more. one more. There's fish right there. See ya. Pull up. There yeah. you got one. Got one. Good job, buddy. No way. <laughs> oh, he's what? Oh, Here's, get under there. Get under there. Get under there. Oh. Hey. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, nice job, Trish. <laughs> Gotta grab that net. You Get got, in there. <laughs> you got that net fast. You know what we're in the middle of? What? Childhood memory in the making. <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. I, I think we're in the middle of adult memory making. Oh. 100%. Yes. I'm filled to the brim here. I got to see my bear. I got to see a mom bear with her cub. And I don't even think it's nine in the morning. <laughs> You know how like you would do these kind of things and the plane ride would make it? Mm -hmm. This makes it. Like <laughs> you would see the bear, but like you can't even like comprehend this yeah. vocab. Yeah. Um, I'm homeschooled. <laughs> and then and then um the uh and then you catch a fish and it's yeah. it's really fun. It's completely amazing how they turn red. I mean, going through the process from birth to incubation <laughs> to out at sea to coming back to turning colors, it's amazing. Okay, can I have this recipe, Morgan? What did you put in here? You can Google it. Type in uh, brown sugar salmon rub, and it'll give you the information. Brown sugar salmon rub. Google it. Okay. Good. There they go for to pick up more lucky people. <laughs> people that have done what? Like everything. Everything. I would have been satisfied with just taking the airplane over through the glacier fields. The ice falls. Amazing. I would have been satisfied with just the bear viewing portion of this. How many bears have we ended up seeing? Five or six? Four, five, five bears. Okay. And little cubs. I would have been satisfied with just the fishing. I mean, right? It was phenomenal. It wasn't fishing, it was catching. Yes. And then I would have been satisfied with just viewing the bald eagles. 50 some bald eagles. Everywhere. All at the same time! Yes, and them fighting over certain things and unbelievable. The fact that all of that was together makes this just a complete over-the-top experience. Once in a lifetime. And when you are flying, it gives you a moment to kind of reflect on all of it. It does, yeah. When you're coming back, mm -hmm. it gives you a, just your 
it gives you a break to just to think yeah. about it. Yeah. This was truly an exceptional experience and Talon Air Services is a class act. So when you're out here in the Kenai, link is down below in the description. Definitely check them out and you know what they should do? add this to your list. What? Look them up. <laughs> Look them up. If I were a uh, American Girl doll, yes, I would be. <laughs> You'd be the Alaskan. I'd be the, the Alaskan version. Yes. yes, you know, with my favorite necklace on. Yes. All right, that is it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Are we even halfway through season five yet? I don't think so. I don't think so either. There's more to come. How are we going to top this one? I don't know. I think everything about Alaska is a little different. Every feel. That's a good point. Every aspect. Yeah. And we have to talk more about what you want out of an Alaskan trip. Yes, so we're going to be so doing we'll do some Alaska Q&As. But that's it for now. Catch you next weekend.